Okay, so did anyone else feel like, damn, dog, she did you dirty when A went to Tamiya to try and jump host and share that body, and she was like, nope, and jumped out the fucking window. I was like, you got, I don't even know, you didn't even get friend zone. Fuck that shit. You got fucking, <laughs> just fuck you. Let's go. So beginning of this episode, it was the fight with Migi versus A, or Migi and Shinichi versus A. And the difference between A and Migi and the parasites and humanity in general is that the parasites cannot understand how a human and a parasite can work together. How could you even use a human, a lowly human at that? And that was his biggest, at first and biggest mistake that he made when fighting Migi and Shinichi. And at the same time, this fight was also developing Shinichi into a more hardened person to be able to endure this journey that he has to go through to fight all these fucking parasites because when he went up to him and stabbed him that was the first time he's ever done anything like that and that's going to totally change him and even though he didn't really kill him per se ultimately i mean he stabbed him with a fucking pipe through the chest and blood was coming out which by the way i just gotta say yet again no censorship yeah yeah and i just loved it when he went for tamia and he was like oh we could share hosts you see just tamia jump out the fucking window and leaving the gas to explode and kill this motherfucker it was like no it's not happening you could definitely see that that's Tamiya, she has developed, like, it's weird because she's still trying to hold on to her parasite ways and such like that, you know, she just doesn't want to completely go away from it, but I think a part of that was, you're not gonna come with me, I'm trying to have a baby, I want to do this the way, like, you know, I, I kind of feel like it should be done, and when he was coming for it, it's like, no, you're not gonna disrupt this, so it's like Tamiya, as a character, is fighting right now between still wanting to hold on to those parasite waves, which necessarily, they don't even need to eat humans, like we see me, he just feeds on the blood, so they don't necessarily need to do those fucked up things, so I think as time goes on, if she keeps on, well, I don't know about after this episode, but if she keeps on going on the path of, like, a human, she could probably blend in and ultimately just live normally assuming one of the parasites don't come and fucking destroy her and then after the big fight we got a little bit of a time skip and i was wondering was it that madhouse just skipped out on some chapters or was it just that you know some time passed or whatever because it looks like those chapters could have been used even though it would have been like some slow progression and kind of some slow exposition it could have told some things that kind of showed a little bit more of the relationship building between me and shinichi but again i haven't read the manga so i don't know if they skipped anything or it was like that and we kind of got to see the politics of humanity in this episode as well when they were basically like oh how could you do that how could you have a baby and you don't even know who's the husband and you know they were all cornering her and she was basically like fuck i can't be this person anymore i had to leave on them because it's kind of like you're looking at it and it's like she wants to be a human or it wants to be a human shall i say but it doesn't understand everything about humanity and the difference between like again anyone else is that migi still has his host you know, mentally there, and no one else has their host there, so it's kind of like them trying to fumble in the dark, so to speak, with their eyes closed, because there just isn't any guideline for them, meanwhile, Migi is kind of learning a little bit more firsthand, and at the same time, you could definitely see as well that it's kind of showing a little bit of, I think, not only biology and, you know, genetically, but also kind of surroundings, kind of having an influence, kind of like nature versus nurture, kind of like how since Migi's around Shinichi, it's helping him to change, but also I think it's the biology as well, because we've seen that in this episode, even his own mother can see that Shinichi has changed quite a bit. And it threw me for a fucking surprise with Tamiya's character, because Tamiya's character up until this point, I'm thinking, so she really just wants to be human. That's one of the main things I thought that she was going for. But then when she killed Tamiya's mother because she found out the secret, I was like, is that going to completely stop the progression into becoming a human? Or, you know, what's up with that? Because she just killed her without even a second thought. She was just kind of like, baffled like oh she caught on to my secret so i was a little bit like fuck the whole thing with shinichi's mom while it did kind of feel a little bit annoying at the end of the day nobody wants to hear a mom screaming at her son or just crying and whining ultimately you could definitely see that it's kind of symbolizing that shinichi even unbeknownst to him has changed quite a bit yeah he is hiding things because you know he can't unravel the secret to migi because migi has threatened him basically like you know i don't have emotions i don't give a fuck about your parents i need you because you're the host but ultimately i don't care about them so i'll kill them if you let them know what's going on but honestly i think a big part of this at this point is Migi is bluffing. And Shinichi don't even realize it. I think, honestly, when he's telling him to repeat that, yes, I know, you will kill my parents, they're not a part, blah, blah, blah. I think that's honestly Migi trying to hear it so that he can keep feeling that way, even though ultimately he doesn't feel like that anymore. He probably is slowly being humanized. I wouldn't be surprised by the end of the series if Shinichi is the one acting like Migi and vice versa because... 
they're just kind of developing that way. For future battles, we definitely got a little bit of something interesting here because we've seen that Mii can detach himself for up to three minutes at this point. And if they keep working on that, who knows? It could be even up to an hour or something. So they can do missions and kind of like have one person fighting. And then, like, let's just say, for example, if it was Mii, you know, detached fighting A, Shinichi could have ran to the other side of the stairs and just fucking lopped his head off or something. So it could have been even easier. So in future battles, that's going to be very valuable. And the bit at the end with his parents finally going on vacation or whatever, I was curious was, was Tamiya looking to like kill Shinichi's parents or attack Shinichi himself? Because I mean, she just killed the mom. So I wouldn't be surprised if she went after his parents like, oh, they can totally detect us immediately. Let me just get rid of all the parents, which would be real fucked up and kind of go backwards from where I thought her character was going again. So it's throwing me for a little bit of a loop. But ultimately, another very good episode of Parasite this week. I mean, we got a fight. We got some character development we got a little bit of advancement we got some plot progression and overall it's just making me think where the fuck could this series go i honestly don't have a pinpoint as to what's going on because like i thought okay tamia's character was going to be more humanized as it goes on but then she kills the real tamia's mother and then with shinichi it's kind of like he's trying his best to be himself but even his mother's like there's something very off about you it's not just the secrets it's like he actually is morphing without him even knowing. Wouldn't it be crazy if the entire time Shinichi really wasn't conscious and this is all in his head that, you know, he's actually taking part in things, but in actuality, Nigi's been controlling him from the get-go. And yeah, very good episode. Let me know what you thought of this episode, though. What do you think about the fight? What do you think about Tamiya? Where do you think her character is going to go? And how did you feel about a lot of the carnage in this one? Honestly, they're not holding any punches back, and I love that about Madhouse. Keep it up. And your overall thoughts, but that's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, if you could do so as well, that'd be awesome. I'm Fennel World. And as always, people, have an awesome day.